So let me just tell you quickly about myself. I grew up in Nigeria here. I left when I was about 13. I moved to Paris. And then eventually I landed in the US. I focused on a lot of classes where half the time I had no idea what was going on. And the other half I was trying to get good grades. And studied a lot. But something that was really important to me was my university actually required every student, every engineering student, to take humanities courses. So I took an African history course. Why not, right? I'm African. I didn't know my history. Now, what was interesting is I spent the next three months, a whole semester, just picture this in your mind, sitting in a room full of people from the US, Europe, elsewhere in the world. And I spent about three months learning about how their ancestors colonized mine. And then every day we'd go to the cafeteria and eat, and we'd do homework together. And I was really, really worried about whether they viewed me as an equal. So I vowed to study really, really, really hard, even harder, and be successful. And I wanted to prove to them that any African child could be equally competent as them. I actually think I was trying to prove that to myself. So this is me, hard at work. My mother will be proud of that picture. You can ignore the one on the right, look like a geek there. So I spent a lot of time since then just trying to figure out what I could contribute and how I can continuously prove to myself and the world that I was equal. And over the last few years, I feel like my career has gone really well. And I'm very fortunate, but also very lucky. And I can't help but think, imagine if every other African child had the same opportunities I did. People who are smarter, harder working, and probably more determined to be successful. Where would we be today? So I have a deep conviction now I'd like to share with you. And I really deeply believe, from my own experiences and that of many other people, that Africans can lead the world. The question is, will we? And so what I'm here today is to tell you that this has to do with you and me and no one else. So we'll take a quick walk through history because this, this talk is focused on the past, present, and future. Let's understand where we came from so we can figure out where we're going. See, Africa has had a history of missed opportunities time and time again. We've almost been there, but we just haven't done it. If you go back to the 17th century, at that point in time, due to advances in farming, new technologies, and just the share will of a bunch of human beings, the world figured out how to create very large-scale farms. And we were able to feed people. And somewhere along the way, people who would have been farmers, who had to worry about what they would eat every day, could actually change their minds and focus on other things. Today, we're still trying to figure out agriculture in Nigeria. Now, let's fast forward again. It's right around the 19th century, when those people who stopped farming started building stuff, started inventing the steam-powered engines, the Thames Tunnel, which was made completely of cement. Textile industry became very popular. Telecommunications, the telegraph, the telephone, a bunch of other things that we use today still. And here we are again in Nigeria, trying to figure out how to get 24-7 electricity. So once again, we kind of missed the boat. And I suspect what happens is a bunch of people figured out science and tech, took that, created skills in education, transferred that to a bunch of other people, and through the leadership, collectively, they were able to build the future that they all wanted, that we're experiencing today, and that we don't have. This is a place called Timbuktu, part of the Songhai Empire. Between the 1400s and the 1800s, the Songhai Empire conquered large swaths of land in Africa, especially with Western Africa. I bet you the kings and queens and princes and children here had dreams and hopes for the future. They had their own ideas of what life would be like a century later. In 1901, France conquered the entire empire. I'm not sure how many of you today think this is still a great place. The influence on the world has pretty much declined, and we have so many more in Nigeria here and elsewhere in Africa. We had the hope, but just never quite materialized. Now we're on the precipice of another major revolution, the technology revolution. And it's taking the world by storm. Massive socioeconomic advancements globally. And everyone believes software is going to eat the world. And if you're not doing technology, you're going to be left behind. So what are we doing? Of course we're going to participate, right? All the headline news tell us technology is disrupting Africa already. So magically, it's going to work out. Or is it? Now, if you studied physics, if you look at an object, 
You track the direction it's moving in, and you look at the speed. You can tell where it's going. And if I applied that very same concept to Africa today, I'm very worried about our future. Because if you look at where we're going, I don't think we'll make it to where we want to get to. And I think someone else will be standing, maybe here, maybe somewhere else, a hundred years from now, saying exactly the same thing, and talking about how, once again, we almost made it in the technology era, but we didn't. Why? See, will the tech revolution pass us by? Will we let it? It's not about the people. We have a large population of very smart, ambitious people that want to make a change, perhaps. Science and technology, skills and education, we don't have that, necessarily. But the internet is the great equalizer. See, in those two previous revolutions, you had to have thousands of years of history in order to learn new things. We don't need that today. Any child in this country, on this continent, can pick up a computer and learn anything from some of the smartest people anywhere in the world. So that's not going to be our excuse. The thing I'm worried about is that last point around leadership. And I think that is the Achilles heels of Africa, if we're not careful. And so Yaba, as we know it today, may not exist in a few years. We're not investing enough in leadership. And what does leadership mean? I don't mean people standing in front of a room giving large speeches like this. What I mean is people that wake up every single day thinking about how to add value. People that think about how to empower other people, not just themselves, but other people. You wake up every day and you, you think, how do I transfer skills and education I have to others? How do I increase opportunities? And I think most importantly, and this is where a lot of our previous leaders have failed us, how do I ensure the next generation is better off than I was? Think about that for a second. If every single person in this country and on this continent woke up every single day thinking to themselves, how can I ensure that the next generation will be better off than I was? Then about 200 years from now, that person who is standing here, who has searched for African child on the internet, may actually see a different image. One where every child that's born on this continent has equal opportunities as everyone else and never has to think about whether they're equal. Now what makes me really excited, because this is all doom and gloom, is the fact that right now, in this room, I can already see many faces of people who are building things, who are trying to add value. Now everything is not always perfect, but it's beyond every one of us. And the things we're doing here will matter not just today or tomorrow, but a thousand years from now. But we cannot do it alone. It requires every one of you and everyone else outside of this building to do the same. So I'd like to leave you with one question, my final note. If the future of Africa depended on every one of us, if our children and grandchildren and their children and grandchildren had to rely on the things we did today to determine what future they would have, and if you knew that you could be a leader who made a change, who every single day woke up, and every decision you made, and every action you took would have a massive impact on the future of this place we call home. What would you do differently? Thank you. <laughs>